Christy. Today, I'm gonna start the next unit of 11th class JK Bose uh, uh, Janarpus Korean chapter, a handful of dates. Introduction. Before we will go to the introduction, I uh, request you to subscribe my channel and uh, uh, click on the bell to turn the notification on. Now, come to the introduction. It is a very good story with a lot of human interest. The central character in this story is a boy. He loves and admires his grandfather and the boy also desires to grow into a man like his grandfather and he comes to know about it, greed and lust for property. The grandfather is keen interested on buying the remaining part of the Masood's land by exploiting his weaknesses. And the old man's evil intentions are exposed at the end of the story and the boy begins to hear his grandfather as once he was imitating his grandfather. Right. Now comes to the summary. The narrator used to go out with his grandfather as a child when the people saw him with grandfather, they give him a pinch on his cheek. He never used to go out with his father. In the morning he would go to the mosque alone to learn the Quran. He loved doing that, but most of the children of his age grumbled at that. The narrator was quick at learning the Quran by heart, and the Sheikh always asked him to stand up and recite the chapter of the Merciful whenever the uh, whenever uh, uh, he had a visitors. The visitors would be pleased with the narrator and then they would pat him on his uh, cheek and on his head. The narrator loved the mosque. He enjoyed learning uh, the Quran and he loved the river also. After finishing his breakfast, he ran off uh, for a swim in the river and after he got tired of swimming, he sat on the back of the river and after he got tired of swimming, he too uh, loved to see in his imagination a tribe of uh, uh, cans living behind the thick wood of, of uh, uh, the trees and he imagined the gans as a people as tall and thin as his grandfather. The beard were white and their beard um, um, were white as he imagined, uh, imagined like the beard of uh, his grandfather and their noses were uh, uh, sharp like his own nose and he loved his grandfather dearly and he imagined that he too would be like his grandfather when he grew up. He was also the old man's favorite grandchild. When the old man had nothing to do, he liked to listen to the Quran being recited by the narrator or the boy, right? One day the narrator asked his grandfather about their neighbor and he told about the Masood that Masood is the nearest neighbor to uh, them. The grandfather said that Masood was an indolent man and he didn't like the people of this time. Then the grandfather drew the attention of his grandson to the field uh, scratching over an area of 100 patterns. He also showed him the date uh, palms, sands, and soil trees uh, growing over the vast expanse of the pill. Then he, old man, told him with an air of self importance that two thirds of the whole field was his, was Masood's. And all those dead trees and other trees too somehow. Uh, belongs to the Masoods and his grandfather hoped that he would buy the remaining one third uh, too. 
Somehow, he didn't like the grandfather's lust for the possessions. He felt fear at his words and pity for uh, his neighbor. He loved Masood Singh, his beautiful wife and powerful love, and his grandfather would never love at all like that. The narrator wanted to now promise grandfather why Masood had sold his land. The grandfather put the blame on, uh, sorry, on the Masood for being a much married man, and every time he married, he sold the grandfather's patents or two. Suddenly, Masood appeared on the scenes, and he invited the narrator's uh, grandfather to the harvesting of dates. A large number of people had come there. Masood stood alone from the gathering of the people, or alone from the gathering of the people. He gave the impression that he had no concern with the harvesting. Sometimes his attentions would be attracted by the sound of huge clumps of dates crashing down from the height. Once he shot it to the boy, um, hacking the branches with his sickle. He warned uh, him to be careful and not to cut the hair of the palm. This made the narrator think of the palm trees as something with a feeling, something possessed of a herd that throbbed. In the meantime, the narrator's grandfather woke on hearing a slow whistling sound. He got up and walked toward the sack of dates. Hussein, the merchant, Musa, the owner of the uh, you know, field next uh, to one, belongs to the narrator's grandfather and the two stranger poet, the grandfather. Masood was moving slowly towards the narrator's grandfather, and they formed a circle round the sex of uh, dates and began examining them. The grandfather gave his grandson a handful of dates and began uh, munching them. Then they divided the sex of, uh, among them. Presently, the grandfather told Masood, you are still uh, 50 pounds in debt to me. The sex of the six of the, you know, dates were lauded on the donkeys and animals, and the narrator felt himself coming near to Masood, and he heard his, uh, heard him make a noise in his throat like a Risping of a, a lamb being slaughtered. My God, here it is a very, you know, emotional lines. For some unknown reasons, the narrator experienced a sharp sensation of a pain in his chest. He felt at that very moment that he hated his grandfather. He went to the river bank. There he put his finger into his throat and uh, spaved up the deeds he had here. He pulled his grandfather's inhuman with no feeling except the lust feelings or the lustful feelings of possessing what belongs to others. He showed a little love for his neighbor Masood. He found his grandfathers a very disgusting persons, a very greedy persons, a lustful persons, extra extra. So the, uh, you know, uh, summary comes to an end. No, let's move uh, toward the question of uh, this lesson, right? We have your first question. How old do you think the narrator is? Give reasons to support your answer, right? Uh, here, the narrator was a child. When he was with his grandfather, he was patted by the people on his, uh, uh, you know, uh, back and his cheek was uh, uh, pinched so that from here we can, you know, uh, 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 you know, judge or examine that the narrator was a child, right? Here the second question we have, why did the narrator enjoy going to the mosque? The narrator loved the mosque. 
Most of his friends grumbled or verbally at learning, uh, you know, the Quran. But he learned it quickly by her. The mosque was one of the three landmarks in his life. He would uh, recite even uh, uh, the chapter of the Merciful to the uh, great delight of the visitors. From all these facts, uh, it becomes clear that the narrator liked going to the mosque. Here we have a question number third. Why did the narrator wish to grow to be like a grandfather? Right? The sorry, the narrator wished to grow up like his grandfather because he was, uh, or his grandfather was his rule model. He loved him a lot. He imagined that when he grew up, he would be tall and slender like his grandfather and uh, 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 with a with a beard, right? Here the question number uh, fourth. Which is what made the narrator his grandfather's parrot. The narrator was an intelligent child, while his cousin was stupid. He knew when his grandfather wanted him to laugh, and when he, uh, you know, wished him to be silent, and he would, uh, you know, uh, bring him his uh, prayer rugs and fill the, uh, sorry, jugs. Um, for the ablutions and he loved his grandfather a lot and he wanted to be tall and slim with uh, a white beard like his grandfather on growing up right we have here the question number five why did the grandfather dislike the masood the grandfather disliked the Masood because he was very lazy and the grandfather didn't, uh, you know, like the lazy kind of people. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Question number six. I don't know why it was. I felt pure at my great, sorry, grandfather's war and pity for our neighbor Masood. What do you think the writer pure his grandfather? Why did he pity Masood? The narrator's grandfather had brought two-thirds of the land with the trees on it from his neighbor Masood. He told his grandson that he would buy the remaining one-third of land of Masood also. The word of his grandfather put fear into the grandson's mind and he started feeling pity for the Masood who would be Held with nothing, and grandfather was narrator's rule model, and the fact of his rule model behaving like a greedy man uh, frightened his sincere mind. We have here question number seven. Grandfather's eyes sparkled momentarily with intense brightness. The emotion he felt was tick here. First option, pleasure, uh, pain. Grady. Here, Grady is appropriate, right? Question number uh, eight. Why was Musud standing alone, uh, although that dared, uh, so now, sorry, dared palms to be harvested were his own? Musud was standing alone, although the dead palms to be harvested were his own. He was not at all greedy. He remained indifferent to the property consideration. And to Masood, human feelings mattered more than money. And the other were arrested in money and dares. Question number nine here. Why did the Masood remarks about the palm trees having a heart embrace the narrators earlier? Do you think he changed his mind at the end of the dares harvest? Give, give reasons of your answer. Was the Masood saw the narrators playing with the with the branch of a young palm tree? Masood told him that the palm trees have a herd, and the sincere narrator felt embarrassed and uh, embarrassed. Sorry, embarrassed, and he felt upset when he raised uh, or when he realized that the human um, begins uh, 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 don't care for their fellow man. And he didn't feel 
you know, uh, uh, saddened uh, at the end of the day's harvest. On the contrary, he felt saddened to see the people, like his grandfather, keen to satisfy their lust, uh, or keen to satisfy his lust for more and more material possessions. And he wanted to purchase at all the land belongs to the Masood. Question number 10. Has everyone else want to work the sack? S A C G S. Sacks of the deer. Masood. Also moored, but with the extreme slowness. What third do you think might have been going through his mind? Masood might have been thinking about the uh, indifferent of people to their neighboring. He might also thinking that the rest of one third of his land might be passing into the hands of narrator's grandfather. And he might also be thinking that his uh, material um, positions were slowly and surely drifting into, his, into the hands of uh, great people and he was uh, unable to uh, stem the drift, right? We have here the question number 11. The writer wanted to uh, draw closer to Masood's and touch his garments. What feeling uh, do you think he had for Masood's? Take the answers. Fear, compassion, or here compassion is the appropriate answer, right? We have here question number 12. How does the young boy feel about his grandfather at the beginning of the story? The grand, uh, you know, Krajal. Um, uh, was uh, full of uh, love and attentions and admirations for his grandfathers at the beginning of the story. And he felt that nobody could be better than his uh, grandfather. He felt that his uh, grandfather must, uh, uh, his grandfather, you know, uh, must be, um, sorry, he Sorry, he felt that his grandfather must have been extremely tall. Otherwise, sorry, otherwise people in the area would not address him without having to look up at him. And the narrator says, a young boy, dearly loved his uh, grandfather and he wanted to uh, grow up like him. Question number 13. What changes do you notice at, uh, in the boy's feeling toward his grandfather at the end of the story. At the end of the story, the boy's feeling toward the grandfather's Aragua change and his feeling of love, respect, admirations were completely gone from his mind. And uh, he hates his, um, you know, uh, uh, grandfather for being, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, lustful and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, keen interested in uh, snatching the, uh, you know, uh, a layer of uh, the Masoods. Here, question number 14. As I think it is most important question, what did the boy uh, speak up the deeds he had here? Did he, uh, did he, uh, you know, plans to do it when uh, the grandfather, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry, the question is here, why did, um, why did uh, the boy uh, speak up the deeds he had eaten. Did he plan to do it when he had walked away from his grandfather? Yes. The boy had eaten the handful of the earths given uh, by his grandfather. Uh, when he proved that his grandfather is lustful and uh, he is a material, uh, you know, a materialistic person, so that uh, he thought that, uh, you know, uh, uh, these deeds which had been given to him by his grandfather is not suitable so he uh, uh, at the last uh, um, rally plans to vomit them when he moved away from his grandfather uh, this was all uh, so that thank you very much for being the part of this video please subscribe to the channel and share all my videos